In a previous video, we've seen the definition of continuity at an argument. The goal of this video is to explore the notion of one-sided continuity, which is to say continuity as you approach an argument from either the left or the right side. Here's the definition of continuity you should be familiar with. Function f is continuous at an argument a if and only if the limiting value of f of x as x approaches a is equal to f of a. Graphically, you can think of continuity as being a sort of resolution of a tension. So if the limiting value as x approaches a winds up matching the function value at a, that's continuity at the argument a. In this example, it's pretty clear the function is not continuous at a. What you're really asking is, does this limit match the function value f of a? But the limit doesn't exist. So there's no way that this equation can be true. So there's no way f can be continuous at a. Having said that, however, we can sort of salvage half the continuity. You'll notice that as you approach the argument a from the right, the limiting value does match the function value. So the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right actually equals f of a. In this case, what we'll say is that the function is continuous from the right at the argument a. This example is subtly different, but you'll notice in this case that the limiting value as you approach a from the left matches the function value f of a, and we would say that f is continuous from the left at the argument a. Now, if a function is continuous at an argument, then you know it's continuous from the left and from the right. And so continuity in an argument implies continuity from the left and the right. Let's try to imagine the converse statement. Suppose you know the function's continuous from the left, which would mean that its limiting value from the left is equal to f of a. And then as you approach from the right, let's suppose that limiting value is also f of a. So you're continuous from the left and the right. But this is a function we're talking about. There can only be one value at a. So those have to match up. And in fact, what we learn is the function's actually just flat out continuous. In other words, f is continuous at a if and only if f is both continuous from the left and from the right. These are logically equivalent conditions. And sometimes it's helpful to break up continuity into both left and right continuity and use this fact when you're analyzing a function, especially when you have piecewise defined functions. So for example, let's suppose you have a function f that's defined by setting f of x equal to e to the x when x is less than or equal to zero and sine x when x is greater than zero. Our job is to analyze the continuity of f at the argument zero. So before we launch into a solution, let's just get a quick sketch of what's going on. We know the component functions are the exponential function and the sine function, but we have to sort of snap these graphs off at the transition point at x equals zero. Because we're using e to the x when x is less than or equal to zero, we'll get rid of the stuff that, that, that occurs to the right of the origin. Notice we fill in the dot because when x equals zero, we still want to use e to the x. Now for positive x, we're using sine. And so let's ditch the part of the graph that occurs to the left of the origin. And so we're going to keep these two pieces. And this is our rough sketch of f. Now, based on this sketch, we would expect that f is not going to be continuous at the origin because the limit doesn't exist. It will be continuous from the left, and it won't be continuous from the right. Now, it's pretty intuitively clear that all this is true, but what we should do is be official about it, go right to the definitions, and back everything up with a rigorous uh, justification. So we'll put our sketch off to the side. It'll help us guide our thinking, but let's really go to the nuts and bolts of this problem. First, let's analyze the limiting value of f of x as x approaches zero from the left. So the function values, because we're using arguments to the left of the origin, we need to substitute e to the x into our formula for f. So we're really looking at the limit as x approaches zero from the left of e to the x. 
Now, we've learned that e to the x is continuous at every real argument. And so that includes 0. And we know that the limit of e to the x as x approaches 0 is e to the 0. And certainly that's true as you approach from the left. So this limit is just e to the 0, which of course is just 1. Now, you may not have to write all this out, but you should be able to take apart all the pieces and see what the justification is for each of your claims. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So here we're going to use arguments to the right of the origin, and our formula tells us that we need to substitute sine x for f of x. So here we're evaluating the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of sine x. Once again, we know that sine is continuous at every real argument, and so we know that the limiting value as x approaches 0 from the right of sine x is going to be sine 0, which is, of course, 0. So there you have it. You have the left and the right hand limits, and they don't match up. So now it's official. The limit as x approaches 0 does not exist, and therefore f can't possibly be continuous at 0. Now, what is f of 0 equal to? Once again, we'll go to the formula. We're meant to use the e to the x formula when x is 0, and therefore f of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. And notice that the function value and the limit from the left match up. That means the function is continuous from the left at x equals 0. Of course, the value does not match up with the limiting value as you approach 0 from the right. And because that's true, f is not continuous from the right at x equals 0. Let's end with this example of um, piecewise defined function. It's got three pieces. So g of x is going to be x squared when x is less than 1, k when x equals 1, and then 5 minus 2x if x is greater than 1. The question is, can k be chosen so that g is continuous at x equals 1? As before, we're going to get a handle on what's going on with a quick sketch. We know what x squared looks like, and we can draw a pretty good sketch of 5 minus 2x, and now we just have to snap off the pieces that are irrelevant and get rid of them. The transition occurs at x equals 1, so we will use the graph of y equals x squared to the left of that and the linear graph to the right of that. And we've got it to scale pretty well so that you can those open dots are at the right place. And now we notice that g of 1 is k. So graphically, once you choose k, then you know where this single dot needs to be placed. So let's think about that. Choosing k is like choosing where that dot sits along that vertical line, x equals 1. Can we choose k so that the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is equal to g of 1, which, of course, is just k? Well, the answer is no, because the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x does not exist. So choosing k is irrelevant. There's no way that we're going to get this function to be continuous at 1. So let's make this official. Let's analyze the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 from the left. We substitute in the appropriate part of the formula in our definition of g. We know that we can substitute 1 in to the polynomial to evaluate this limit. So the limit from the left is 1. And the limit from the right at 1, we would substitute in the linear piece, 5 minus 2x, because we're sampling arguments to the right of 1. And again, we use the substitution principle here. Linear functions are continuous, so we can plug 1 in. So the limit from the right is 3. These don't match up, so the limit doesn't exist. And the function, therefore, cannot possibly be continuous at 1. And it really doesn't matter what we choose for k, because that limit is broken. Now, we've answered the question. The answer is no. We can't choose k so that the function will be continuous. But let's push beyond that simple answer. Let's really take control of this problem. 
if you choose k equal to 1, then what you will have done is forced the function value to match up with the limiting value as you approach x from the left, and therefore the function will be continuous from the left. Similarly, you could choose k equal to 3, and you will have guaranteed that the function will now be continuous from the right. So a very complete answer to this question is, no choice of k will make g continuous at x equals 1. However, if k equals 1, then g is continuous from the left, and if k equals 3, then g is continuous from the right.